Morning YouTube. Thanks for checking out RV Daydream. Today we're going to take the truck to the shop. I've been riding on a daydream. Well, we got another gorgeous day out. Uh, no rain really in the forecast and it's in the 80s. Could be a little warmer, but you can feel the wind, I'm sure, through the microphone. Let's go ahead and uh, take this baby to the shop. I think I'll take that CP antenna off. Last night, late last night, actually early this morning, I took that through McDonald's and it clunked. <laughs> so I better pull that off before we go. All right, guys, so we're here, and this is uh, Goodyear, and also known as Salem Tire. So hopefully these guys can get me narrowed down to what the problem is. So I'm leaving Salem. The truck needs some bushings for the caster and camber. Uh, which somebody uh, had commented so uh, yeah good uh, good call there um, I do have a ball joint that has a busted zerk fitting um, which may require me to do some work on it uh, and replace that ball joint but I'm going to make the replacements myself uh, as far as the parts that are needed and then take the truck back for an alignment because it's like three hundred dollars for them to do all the work uh, versus me doing it for about uh, $75 and then the alignment uh, will only cost about $70 so instead of $300 it will be about $150 total and uh, it's a little rough, a little hard work but nothing that I can't do so we'll get back to the house and uh, I gotta order some parts. Alright guys, so it's the next morning. I got the truck back home, I got the parts ordered, and I'm having them next day air overnight for today. So I got a lot of work ahead of me. I got my workout clothes, meaning I'm gonna be working out in the driveway. <laughs> I don't have any room in the garage, or I'd say I'd work it out in the garage. Uh, got my Breakfast of Champions uh, cold pizza and uh, some water. <laughs> So hopefully that keeps my hunger down for a little bit. It's a nice day out. Uh, pretty much like yesterday. It's going to be uh, 84 today. There's a slight breeze. Uh, the dew points aren't that high, so I'd like it a little bit more humid, but it's uh, still nice. It's a nice day. Now it's going to be really warm uh, tomorrow. Uh, it'll be in the 90s, and the uh, dew points are climbing up. And then I think uh, uh, we're going to have 90 pretty much every day with a chance of rain uh, for the next few days so it'll be a good time to uh, be in a shop and having this work done so what I have to do today is basically pull off my wheels of course I gotta jack the front end of the truck up chalk the rear tires but remove the wheels and tires and then I'm not going to replace the upper ball joint that has the zerk fitting missing um, I did order it and it is coming um, and it will be here today it's just to speed things up and make sure that I've got this problem solved I know the ball joints are okay it's just missing a grease fitting so what I'll do is replace those bushings which I'll show you guys what that looks like and I'll probably have to shoot a video for my other channel um, and I had some people ask about that uh, my other channel is Fox Boss 9 it's at Fox just like the animal boss the person that you report to and then the number nine so Fox Boss 9 if you want to look that up I do a lot of repairs on that channel and uh, step by step kind of tutorials uh, it's uh, my first channel and it grew life on its own and it's got quite a few subscribers at this point I think I might have about 50 I don't know 5,000 something subscribers so the channels done pretty well it's just one of those work channels <laughs> whenever I'm shooting videos for that channel I know that I'm working so it's not as fun as this channel I've said that in the past you guys have been following most likely what I'll be showing then is what's involved and uh, hopefully this will get us to where we can take it to the shop tomorrow and they can get it all dialed in and let me tell you what they told me what they told me was that uh, the caster was out on this uh, the camber slightly and believe it or not the toe now from my previous video that I did when we were camping and I had these tires installed the Firestone shop that I took it to charged me eighty dollars and did an alignment and said that my toe needed adjusted uh, what toe is is just like you would think if you've got your feet together and your 
toes and heels are touching each other, that's straightforward. However, if you take and move your toes outwards and your heels together, that's toe out. That's what the front end looks like. It, you know, the tires would point out. You know, one tire this way and the other tires this way. And then, of course, toe in would be just like on your feet. If you would have your toes touching, as far as your big toes touching, and your heels apart, that would be toe in. That's something that's very easy to adjust, and sometimes that's something that's easy to go out of adjust. So, whenever he had told me that I needed a toe adjustment, no big deal. I know that I don't have any worn parts as far as that goes and uh, it just needed adjusted because I had different tires and you know over time stuff does wear slightly and settles and causes that kind of need well this shops telling me that the toe is not adjusted and it needs done well I trust this shop that I'm at now more than I do the other one the only reason that I went to the other one was because they could get me in that day I had an appointment for the first shop and I should have kept it uh, and I told those guys that. I said, you know, I, I went up the street to Firestone because they could get me in. I was in a rush. I wanted to see how this thing towed with the new tires. And, of course, you see the results from that. They also said that the caster angle was gone. Now, I did look up who it was that suggested that, uh, as I mentioned earlier in this video. Flat four. Flat four, thanks. I appreciate it. I guess the reason that I thought it was something going on in the rear end of the truck was you know I just had it in a shop and they just did an alignment and they said that everything was okay and that it was straight <laughs> well you know you don't think to go back and re-look over their work again so I assumed the front's done let's look at the back and see what's going on there so live and learn just like always so the caster angle is out and let me show you what that is I'm gonna try to kind of explain that to you this wheel and tire assembly is mounted to a rotor that's mounted to a bearing and a spindle and on that spindle there's two mounting points that connect it to the uh, I-beam in this case in most vehicles it could be control arms but on the I-beam there's two points of connection there's one up high and there's one up low well what you can do with the mounting on this is change how it's positioned this is going to be the caster adjustment. You can have it straight up and down, you can have it backwards, you can have it forwards this way. And it really doesn't affect the tire per se, it's more the steering and the geometry of the steering. And the best way I can describe that is on a bicycle. Okay, I can probably hear you guys now, no, not more drawings. On a bicycle, of course, you got your front wheel, you got your back wheel, you got your sprocket and here Heidi knocking on my door there <laughs> sending me messages and you're gonna have your post this way you're gonna have your seat post and then um, connection here and this will go up a little further and then you're gonna have your handlebars and then you're gonna have your forks that come down to the wheel now let's put a seat on there that would hurt <laughs> this is one ugly bike this is the axis for the steering and you can see that bicycles are at a certain angle now you guys remember from the 70s or maybe even in the 80s uh, some of us would screw around and put big forks on the front of our bicycles and basically change this angle uh, from what you see there to something like this and let's put the tire out here so it's kind of hard to tell with uh, this being in the way at that point but you can see that whenever you turn your steering wheel the tire now will kind of just pivot on the same spot and make it harder to stare the same with back here you're gonna have a certain angle that you want that staring at so let's try to go back and I'll try to recreate that normal one now when you turn the steering wheel you can see that it changes where it's going to turn it at the range of movement is going to be here and here when you turn the steering wheel versus the range of movement is here and here so that's basically the steering axis that you're going to be changing and that the vehicle has the same thing not as drastic as this but 
that's what I need to adjust and it just takes very minor changes for that to happen because on a vehicle you have a lot of other factors that put a lot of strain on the steering as you go down the road and your tires are rolling as your vehicle is being propelled forward there is a force that is being applied on your tires and pulling and causing the tire to roll I mean basically you have friction that is rolling that front tire so that friction will put wear on the tire and pull on the tire as you go down the road and your back tires or front tires for that matter are pushing it down the road so whenever you add that the angle for the steering is a little bit incorrect and you take in consideration radial pull uh, you, ha you have issues you have steering issues just like mine and you can see how little it takes uh, all I need to do is move a half to a degree on the left back and one and a half to two degrees on the right side forward. Which these bushings that I have, they're like uh, zero to four degrees that I can make adjustments on. And I'm just going to get it close because, again, I'm taking it to the shop. And at that point, they can just, during a normal alignment, uh, move those bushings to where they need to be to make it perfect. So I hope I didn't bore you with all that crap. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and get to work, and we'll pick this up when I'm further down the road. But I'll uh, try to start and get some stuff done. All right, so I got it partially apart. I'm just waiting for UPS to deliver my parts. Um, this is what it looks like. It's just the bushing that goes into the I-beam mount for the spindle. And you can see it's offset and uh, depending on how you turn it um, it puts that steering rake that I spoke of uh, forward and back let me show you what it looks like underneath here it's a little bit dark and I'm shooting a video for my other channel so I got a camera up there but it's it's pretty straightforward and you can see now this moves around that's your ball joint there basically what you do is wherever you position this bushing at um, depending on how you turn it makes the mounting point forward or backwards so these new ones that I have they're indexed and they're marked and there's a chart that you go by to tell you how to turn it to make that offset uh, in the position that it needs to be at and I'll get it kind of close but again I'm taking it to the alignment shop and then they can do the rest so well a few hours have gone by and FedEx dropped off a package for my daughter but still haven't got anything from UPS usually uh, they come around Mm, three-ish I think so I still got probably an hour or so before he shows up I was hoping that it being next day air that it might make it to where they're going to deliver it a little earlier but I'll get it eventually in the meantime I've got some stuff for the camper let's go look at that okay so this is where we always hang our keys when we come in and although it works and it does a pretty good job um, we don't have a way to put anything large there really and I throw a lot of stuff up over here on uh, this valance so I have somewhere to set like my wallet or something like that but we were wanting some more storage like everything else you always could uh, utilize more storage somehow and um, we were thinking about right here uh, putting something so I ordered this and it wasn't very expensive um, it's kind of nice it's a little wire basket on the bottom you can see here and then in a place to hang things whether it be hats or keys most likely keys in our case um, I, I think it's nice I, I think it's pretty decent and now that we got it in hand I can see that it would fit over here um, if we wanted to do that so we might do that maybe it'll go over here heck we could actually put one over here too if we wanted hmm tough decisions <laughs> but we got something to hang up so we'll, we'll try to find a place for that I also got something for the refrigerator these aren't very expensive and as always all this stuff will have links down below if you click the link you'll get the exact same thing now somebody had mentioned that you should buy an indoor outdoor thermometer uh, that way you don't open the refrigerator to see what the temperature is inside sounds great sounds dandy however um, they also have mixed reviews some of them say they just quit working some of them say they're extremely inaccurate uh, some of them say that the uh, batteries die out, whatever the case. And the more I got thinking about it, do I really need any more than this? Uh, this was like $7 and some change. The other ones were like $12. 
I, I would just rather go with something like this because our freezer downstairs in the basement has a gauge similar to this and it's been in there since the 80s and it works just fine so um, definitely going to uh, put this in the fridge and finally this here um, the perfect tear one hand pull and tear absolutely no unraveling they say this is supposed to be like the perfect paper towel dispenser and uh, yeah we'll have to see I'll put that in place of the old one and we'll see if it really works as I'm doing all these installs I also need to do this we've had this for quite some time and Heidi asked me every single time have you been able to put that up yet <laughs> and what this is is those plastic bags you get at Walmart or the dollar stores or whatever uh, this gives it a place to go uh, it gives you mounting screws some sticky tape that kind of a thing so we're gonna find a place for this and load it up with those bags so we can just uh, pull them out as needed also for the refrigerator is this here this is a spring-loaded bar basically um, that goes inside and keeps the food from flopping around or the taller items from flopping around uh, if you've packed your refrigerator, obviously you wouldn't necessarily need this because everything would be up against the door, but you're not supposed to do that for cooling reasons. So we'll go ahead and put this in the fridge also and get to that at a later date when we have food to try it out. And finally we got these little babies. I've got three or four of these. I can't remember how many. Uh, they come with uh, 3M tape for the back and you just stick this in a cabinet area you load this up with uh, about three double a batteries i can't remember how many tell you the truth then stick this up in a cabinet like uh, in our cabinet situation you can see how dark it is in there uh, the camera is adjusting for light but you can tell it's still dark we can put these in there and uh, they sense motion and they come on and they do a good job i tried one of them out in the house for over a year before we went ahead and bought three more uh, hopefully uh, these three work just as well you can see there's a little light sensor here and hopefully then whenever we open this up uh, the light will come on so I got a lot of stuff to do and hopefully I can get most of this done um, before my parts come okay so far I'm striking out right and left uh, first of all we don't have any AAA batteries and I want to be able to turn on the light and uh, see where I need to place it um, and how far back how far in where the motion still activates it without going to too much trouble again <laughs> no batteries can't do that make sure that you open your box all the way for this thing the paper towel holder and there um, there's some screws in there and uh, some little anchors um, I can't put that up because I do not have a single full roll of paper towel so I can see what kind of diameter I need to be concerned with whenever I'm mounting it um, initially I thought that it would just go back in place of the other one which would be roughly uh, right about here but I don't know if it's going to allow the paper towels to be loaded with the light fixture so close so then I thought about putting it this way back here and now I don't know if the paper towel roll will rub the valance or the cabinet if I do that so I have to wait to get a paper towel roll before I put that in so scratch that off now I'm looking for a place to put this and I think I might be able to find something so let me go ahead and try to put this in all right so there's the new place for the uh, bag holder uh, we'll have to get a bunch of our bags from in the house and bring them out here we kind of run out of them when we're camping because we kind of use them as trash bags and of course here's the basket um, that works out just good right there I'm, I'm happy with that it's not in the way and it's kind of where the old keys were it makes it easier getting the keys on and off because these little hooks quite frankly were kind of hard to get to and uh, I think one of them had been pulled out at one point and they replaced it <laughs> because it doesn't look the same as the other um, but yeah that's good got a place to put some stuff already got these papers and envelopes out of the way there so that's nice and put the refrigerator bar in there um, don't know if we're going to need that necessarily we'll see as uh, we go down the road it'd be kind of nice uh, to have if we do need it it might hold the pop in a little bit better if we have cans of soda or something and then of course the thermometers in the back there um, just hanging out so that's all I can think of right now in the RV uh, maybe I'll hang up Heidi's welcome sign I think that was supposed to be over the door or something all right so I went out in the garage and found an old dishwasher panel from a dishwasher that I scrapped out a long time ago 
and I saved the panel you can see here it says uh, Maytag Performa <laughs> anyways I trimmed out a couple of the pieces because it's kind of a thick aluminum then I took my air stapler and then hit it a bunch of times with staples to hold it in place and uh, I'm just going to slip it behind the valance that's up here um, so I'm going to take those tabs and put one here and one here and then push them flat and that should hold it there so let's see what that looks like so there it is hopefully that stays up there uh, it looks like it will hopefully the balance stays up there <laughs> who knows that may fall off oh Heidi will be happy that that's there I was gonna put it above the door but that seemed kind of stupid why would you have the word welcome <laughs> when you were leaving maybe I'll put one up there says uh, see you next time or something <laughs> so this is all I can really do out here and I'm just waiting for UPS. Ugh, I hate this. There he goes. Guess what he dropped off. Yay, my parts. Here they are in the boxes. Let's open them up and take a look at this stuff. You can see these little beauties. Um, they're kind of strange little setup. Basically what it is, it's two pieces you can see here. And those two pieces move within each other. And then the outer piece moves inside of the... Uh, upper spindle so it gives you the adjustment that you need but the alignment shops gonna do that I'm just installing these to save myself that hundred and fifty dollars got that one in I got it all bolted back together you can see there um, so all I gotta do is drop it off to the shop tomorrow and when they're doing the alignment they're gonna make adjustments down here uh, for the toe and then they're gonna make it well they may have to make the adjustment on the other side for the toe I mean they're both the same but it could be one's worse than the other and then uh, they'll be able to just loosen this bolt here and uh, turn the lower part of this bushing to get the camber correct and then the upper part for the caster or vice versa I can't remember which is which but um, this will allow them to do that and dial it in the next thing I'm gonna have to tackle uh, is gonna be these shocks um, you can see how rusty they are I'm assuming these shocks have been on here for a long time We'll have to see if Heidi's got anything for sale up at work. Uh, the bushings back here on the radius arm look pretty good. So no problems there. And as far as the rust, those things are solid. It's just the paint that's flaking off. This is much better than my F-150 was. Uh, and my F-150, it rusted through the radius arm. That was kind of scary. Luckily, I was pulling in the driveway when it happened. So I'm not going to make you watch that other side being done i'm going to close this out for today just wanted to give you a heads up what's happening and it's a nice day though beautiful day as always guys i hope to see you out there bye